scorekeeper in your life. Welcome to Wisdom in the Word, a weekly spotlight on the many truths preached in the book of Proverbs. These life lessons were first recorded in the 10th century BC and are still spot on and directly ap applicable to our lives 3,000 years later. Why have these truths survived so long? The truth does not change with the seasons or with changes in governments. Let's look to Proverbs 24, 29. Do not say, I will do to him as he has done to me. I will pay the man back for what he has done. Life is full of opportunities to want to get even. Can you think of any instances where your thoughts were, just you wait, your turn's coming. Have you ever mumbled or thought or spoken, wait until you're least expecting it, I'll get even. Are you preoccupied trying to keep the score even? What if you get far, what if you get too far behind? Can you call in reinforcements? How, does the, how long does the tally stay in place? Do those ill-intended deeds ever expire from your scorecard? Are you able to turn the page and start with a clean slate every day? Proverbs 17, 13 says, If anyone returns evil for good, evil will not depart from his house. It is part of our sin nature to want to right the wrongs with our own app application of justice. But who appointed us as scorekeeper or referee? Does applying a wrong to a previous wrong now make it a right? Do some wrongs need a double or triple dose of retribution? According to whom? I realize that in Exodus 2, there are verses setting the rules for retribution. If your ox kills my ox, then the Old Testament tells us just how to handle each variable of this and similar scenarios. Today, we tend to be more focused on one person's response to hurt, insult, or slander, or similar attacks often with no physical contact at all. We all know the part in James 3 verses 1 through 12 where the lesson is that the tongue is mightier than the sword. Why do we have such a hard time turning the other cheek? What happens to letting it roll away like water off of a duck's back? Again, it is our sin nature and pride that encourage us to have to have the last word or connive to gain the upper hand. Have we totally abandoned the concept of forgive and forget? Can we get hung up on measuring transgressions? Your hurt or insult towards me was a four and mine back to you was only a two, so I still owe you two. Or why do we revel in holding the upper hand over everyone? Well, this is a good spot to interject the familiar WWJD. What would Jesus do? We are taught that Jesus died for all of our sins. What a blessing as man comes to know him with a full sack of ugly history that would overflow Sam's bag. Have you ever heard Jesus saying, I have forgiven half your sins? Can you remember any passage where he says, whoa, this one's too far gone for me? Of course not. While we'll never match Jesus in our ability to forgive, we can adopt an attitude of forgiving others. This should be a no brainer when we consider what has been given for us to have a clear slate. We are reminded in Isaiah 43, verse 18, forget the former things. 
Do not dwell in the past. The truth being, God calls on us to let go of former things so that we can cling to our new identity in Christ. Imagine the energy we have expended trying to figure out superior ways to get even. After all, if we are going to get even, we may as well make it memorable. Can you remember each occurrence of who did what to whom? How far back are you willing to hold on? Do hurtful deeds have an expiration date? Have you ever tried to, retali to retaliate only to get punched back with a stronger, and more painful blow? I admit it is hard to forgive in many instances, and even though you may never forget, it doesn't mean that we can't forgive. If we play this game of life, looking into the rearview mirror, we see numerous incidents, incident, incidences of hurt, blame, and even shame. And by looking back, we are shielded from seeing the blessings and opportunities that lie ahead. Truth is, we're not going to change anything that happened in the past. We can hope to absorb the lesson learned and apply it when needed tomorrow. How many blessings have we all missed by looking back over our shoulder? How much time have we wasted keeping score? Have, have you ever lost a friend because you refused to wipe the slate clean? Yes, even families keep score within the bond. How tragic that events or words 30 or 40 years ago still fuel the barriers to love and forgiveness. Proverbs 19.11 reminds us, good sense makes one slow to anger and it is his glory to overlook an offense. Let's pray. Lord, please help us to score, discard our nature to keep score. Help us to throw away the scorecard of past hurts that continue to hinder relationships and blind us to opportunities to show love to one another. Show us how to take the eraser of forgiveness and use it to clean the slate in our playbook of life. Open our eyes to the opportunities to love one another and to know exactly what would Jesus do. This we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for dropping in today. Please join us again every Saturday when a member of the BFC team will share more of life's applications that we have weathered that have weathered the test of time and man. Thank you.